Hey folks, how's it going? I know this is coming up a bit late, so I guess I'll have to change the schedule for this little series. But this was a fairly busy week. Paradise Lost is pretty much gone already, and next up we're going to have What Makes the Sky Blue free. In the meantime, we've got a lot of side stories to catch up on, and we need to check the Primark raids. So let's start from Paradise Lost and see where that takes us. The event itself was fairly easy, of course for the raids I had to call for backup, but that's normal at this table. Character wise, Sandalfon is an SSR, and I'm a little bit on the fence about using him, cause I know I said I would only use event and side story R's and SR's. Still, he's going to join the side story tab fairly soon, so he's going to become a very easily farmable character for everybody. So let me know whether I can or cannot use him. Especially because Sega Games recently decided to lower the level requirements for some of the collaboration side stories, and Love Live especially comes with three free SSR characters. So on one side they are easily farmable characters, on the other side they are SSR rarity. So let me know what would you prefer. Should I use all the free characters that I get, or should I not because they are SSRs? Because in this category, we're also going to get Monica, as well as Pecorin and Kokoro once their own collaboration side story comes up. While farming, I managed to get rank 20 on the Dark Fencer, and that means I can finally use Mutable Mist on every other class. So we can go back to tier 1 and start leveling them all up. Still, we got this light reverie here, and I think we should prepare for it. We need a dark team for it, but we don't even have a full dark front line. So the first step before doing this is to get another dark character. And for that we're going to go back to our side stories. So a dark character comes from one of these two side stories, I can't remember which one. But with these four new side stories unlocked, as well as four other side stories back here, I'd say we're very backed up. Yare, yare. Yeah, yare yare, alright, let's start catching up with this stuff. First thing first, Blade of Young Champion. We left this behind for quite a long time, so it's time to get to it. So, Jury is going to join our Earth team instead of Wilder, providing a little bit of damage and a substitute. And we can finally swap out the Dark Fencer for another class. Weapon wise, we've got a sword and a nice fist, so I guess we can go with Grappler. At this point though, I don't think there's any priority to go through. Other good sub skills to use would probably be a clear or another defense down, so that would be warrior and priest, but those skills can wait, especially now at low levels. So we're just going to unlock them all, CP permitting. And sub skill wise, as long as we got our miserable mist, we're good. By completing the ending, we get the free SSR weapon. This time it's a spear, with a normal skill and a big boost to water attack, so it's fairly good. Sadly, the same can't be said for the summon. 25% boost to water attack is fairly low and the boost to healing is pretty negligible. Here we're only two quests away from completion, so might as well do them. The first quest is just against a couple of Imperial soldiers. These guys are going to get blown up. Yeah! 
And of course, they go down with no sweat. We're finally getting to a point where these side stories are extremely easy. Next up, we got Poseidon. And of course, we're going to go in with the same team. Difficulty-wise, it's the same level 25 Poseidon that you find in the story, so there shouldn't be any issues. And for some reason they just all keep eating Yugen, which is all the better for us. Just one more turn before everybody can oogie. Or not, since Yuga stays at 85%. But we leave him down to 8%. And we got plenty of nukes to go through. And looks like they are enough. And there is our summon. A couple more achievements and it's time to move on to the next side story. Here too, Vayne is very eager to join us. And since we just got a nice little spear, I think it's time to start leveling up the Lancer. Again, until we get our 3 star sneak, we're still going to go with auto select. And this time, we're getting up to 6.5k attack. By completing the main story, we got our Belmung. Sadly, this is kind of a crap weapon. Next up, it's the 4 Knights of a and Land. Before doing that though, we got a couple more raids to go through. First one being the Fafni Showdown. Is big and scary, but this shouldn't be a hard fight. Yep, that went by really fast.
Next up we've got the battle with Sylph, which also should be fairly easy. But now that we got double trouble on our main character, I think we can either move Sig in the backline or remove her completely. Alright, one quick Kogi, and there we have the fight. And another Fire Salmon. Sadly, Sylph is only as good as Poseidon, so she'll be warming up our inventory and nothing else. Acto wise, Lancelot here likes to make us wait, but after three chapters, we managed to rescue him from the dungeon and we're going to add him to our team. He's got some little bit of a nuke, another attack and defense down, and a multi attack up. Overall, a fairly decent SA character. One little problem we might have with him is his attack and defense down, since we don't know whether it actually stacks with Miserable Mist or it misses. So we're going to cast Miserable Mist first and Worgen Stone second. And by the looks of it, it actually stacks. That's very good. More defense down is always welcome to increase our damage. By completing this story, we get the Dragon Spear. Sadly, this only gives a medium boost to fire attack and small boost to fire HP, so we probably won't be using it. One good weapon we're going to get soon is that Harp. Not only Harp is a fairly rare class of weapons, this one is actually an EX weapon, so it's going to be fairly good for our wind grid. All that's missing now is to complete the two extra quests for Fafnir. His 50% boost to fire attack aura is the same as the one we're using right now, but his call inflicts a 10% fire defense down, which will come fairly handy. Alright then, the first raid is the otherworldly envy, and Birdie McTicks here is actually fairly easy, especially considering that now we get two debuffs on her.
And there we go. Easy enough. Now let's move on to the second raid. The Nomad. Sadly our charm missed, but at least we managed to stick both Miserable Mist and the Defense Break from Lancelot, so our damage should be fairly high. And yeah, we're getting close to 20,000. Okay, let's try charm again. And another miss. Too bad. So we managed to hit him with a 3 menugi. Sadly, MC is stuck at 95%. But even if that's not enough, it's probably going to be one of the last turns. And down he goes. Now we only have a couple more side stories to go through before the actual meat of this video. And we are already up to 17 minutes. And we got our Fafnir. Next up, we should be doing between Frost and Flame, but since this is the Dark Cult we need, we're going to give priority to a tale of intersecting fates. In the end, I'm glad they reduced the level requirements for this. On one side, sure, full side stories are a lot of content to go through, and you kind of feel swamped by them. On the other hand, each of the side story gives three free characters, so there's really nothing to complain about there. And that's the third. Completing this side story also awards us with a balanced blade, which is another EX weapon that is going straight into our fire grid. And of course, we also unlock Tale of Skyborn Bonds. From this one we're also going to get another light character and another dark one, so it might be worth jumping straight into it as soon as we complete the two quests from here. Vakeron here is the one that's a little bit more challenging, so it's probably worth taking a look at it. Sadly, our miserable mist missed both debuffs, but hopefully the double attack up from Ilya can help us deal some damage. That's almost 800 damage AoE and an attack and double attack down. Mm, that's pretty bad. A clear would have come really handy here. Okay. 
I want to wait for the debuffs to go away before Rogan. Hopefully he's not going to reapply them. And I'm not sure if this is better or worse. I mean, sure we no longer have an attack down, but this is going to suck 10% charge bar out of everybody at the start of every turn. Pretty much preventing us from Ogin. Duration wise, it lasts enough for him to reapply it. So yeah, this is pretty damn bad. If you get in here, make sure you're bringing a clear or a veil. Thankfully, Eliza is going to save us here. She can give herself a little bit of charge bar, and she's actually going to allow Rakam and Milia to follow up in the Rogi. And with a nice Shiva summon, this should be the end of it. Well then, other than the lack of a clear, this went fairly nice. And the second star is probably one of the best weapons we can get on these side stories. Its EX skill and its decent stats are going to make that weapon a mainstay in our currently non-existing, but soon to exist, Dark Grid. Alright, so, speaking of weapons. Auto-selecting here should be putting the recently acquired fight sword in our grid. And there it is, we're up to 7000 damage. If you notice the icons, we've got an EX icon under that weapon, we've got an Omega or Magna icon under the cane, and no icon on the sword and dagger. Those are normal weapons. The way damage calculation works in this game is multiplicative, meaning the more different modifiers you have in your grid, the higher your damage will be. For Magna Grids, this usually means going for 4 to 5 Magna Weapons, 2 EX Weapons, 1 Seraphic, 1 Bahamut and 1 Normal Weapon. But of course, those numbers change based on what you need. For the moment, since this is going to be our main EX Weapon in here, and it's already up to level 100, we're going to skill it up a few. By clicking on the upgrade button, we're brought to this window. Skilling up weapons is not that complicated of a process. The general rule about it is that you need double the amount of SR weapons than your current skill level. These rare experience boosters make a little bit of an exception. Each of them actually counts as two rare weapons, so we're going to need four of them in order to increase the skill level of our SSR weapon from one to two. A little bit of fodder later, we are up to skill level 4. We are going to need 8 SR weapons for this. And I'm trying to pick up the ones that I'm sure I won't need to reduce later on. Or that I don't want to use for our grid. And that's skill level 5. I believe we are going to stop here. Since there's at least one other weapon that I want to skill up, and I don't want to run too low on fodder just yet. And there it is, the second star. 
and we managed to bring this one up to skill level 5 as well. And if you want to see how much difference those skill levels do, our damage against light foes was at 5500. With those skill levels it's now nearly 5800. Ok then, now we've got a light reverie to deal with, as well as try and get all the Thunderphone summons. Let's get to it. Sadly, not just yet. Even though we are up to 25 minutes, this is going to go on for a little while still. So, for the Light Reverie, we're going to fight our first Metatron, and I seriously hope this team is enough. At least he tries to help out with a little drain. More attack and defense down is going to boost our damage a little bit, but he's still up to 100%. Okay, then we don't need the debuff from the cat, and we probably won't ever touch Luna. Turn 1 is still up to 100%. Turn 2 is still up to 100%, and I'm getting worried. Ok, it takes us 3 turns to deal 1% worth of damage, so maybe 300 turns from here we should be done. Unless of course he kills himself with wet damage. But it looks like he deals less damage to us than what we actually heal. And if that's the case I think I can leave this on auto for like an hour or two. On the right side the drain seems to be indefinite, so we should be fine here. Even up to 600% speed this still feels too slow. Well, but we can't die, so there's really no point in going through all of this. Let's just cut it. It only took 25 minutes, but at last, we have our summon cradle. And with this, we can trade for one of the summons. The most valuable one in here are probably just Varuna, maybe Agni, depending on which weapon you pull that of the Getcha. But since we are not going to use any of these, and since the normal versions are stronger anyway, our choice is going to fall on the Sunlight Stone. Should we get anything decent out of the Getcha once we're done with the Siri, we can start thinking about uncapping it. Either that, or we can start working on the Arcarum summons, whichever comes first. Alright, now we're only missing the standard phone summon. Also, I almost forgot the daily free draw. I don't expect anything out of this, I mean it's only 3% draw rates and I've been getting blues all over both here and on my main account. Of course. Of fucking course. What is this? <sighs> really? Jean, really? You want to see something sad? Here is something sad. High rarity. Click and exclude from auto select. Yep, yep, yep. Of course, the account that can't use them gets them. But we all know that you can't spell salt without alt. So let's just move on and try not to think about it. And moving on, this is the result of the Paradise Lost grind. 
Sadly, I only managed to get two swords. The others are locked behind the Iolner rewards, which I can't get yet. But summon wise, I managed to get all four the sandal phones I needed. And since this is the first very good summon that we get, I'm going to uncap it and level it up. And there we have it, all the way up to level 100. Hopefully we can actually get it there. As I said earlier, Sandalphone is going to be a mainstay summon in all of our grids. He provides an attack up, a little bit of a heal, as well as a 70% boost to light attack for our light team. What else can we ask for? Also, I'm sorry that this video came out way too long and probably way too messy, but I somehow ended up recording over 5 hours of footage in the span of 3 days and I had a little bit of trouble trying to squeeze it all together. I'm going to try and fix it up from the next time onwards, so I only do like one to two side stories to actually stay on par with them, and then try and do the live events. Next up we got a couple more side stories as well as what makes the sky blue free, but this time I think I will try and upload it on Friday rather than Saturday. So. Thank you all for sticking around and see you on Friday. Ciao!